little bit more mellow this time, man. A little bit more mellow this time. You know what I mean? But this is weekend beat time, guys. The weeds and some of these. It's a beautiful beat, man. So, without further ado, this is weekend beat time. Alright guys, man, so welcome again, welcome back to another episode of Weekend Beat Time, guys. Um, this time, it's on time, man, so um, thanks for joining me, man. This week, you know what, man, I'm doing something that's a little bit uh, reflective of, of how I feel at the moment, man. I just want to chill out, man, I had a rough week, so I wanted to make a chilled out beat, man, something to make me feel good, man. Nothing hyper, nothing dark, just at the moment, just want some peace, man, and that's how the beats turned out, man, so, um, come along for the ride, man, I got a couple, it turns out I, I, I used a couple of techniques I haven't shown you guys before, man, so, um, we'll look into those sorts of things, man, so, um, remember, just hit the thumbs up, man, hit that subscribe button, guys, share it, man, if you may, uh, if you can as well, <laughs> and, um, you know what, man, just, uh, let's just keep the fun going, alright, guys, man, so, peace. Alright guys, so um, <clears throat> our first set of drums is going to be from the Thriller album by Michael Jackson. We're going to be using Billie Jean. Billie Jean is going to be the track. We're going to get the drums off that. I'm sure many people have used it before, man. That's Billie Jean. That's MJ. That's Michael Jackson. An interesting fact. Check this out. He's got a, 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 leopard, a leopard napkin. He's got a snake belt. And then he's got a tiger, a little cub tiger on his leg, who's biting his leg because the tiger's like, fuck you, man, I'm not next. You know what I mean? So, we're using the start of the album, which is just this part here. This part here. Pretty straightforward. Right? Just gonna use that. I'm gonna sample that in, and then we're gonna move on. Alright, we're gonna stick with, with, with the Thriller album, and we're gonna be um, using the track. PYT, Pretty Young Thing, and um, just the start of it, man, just the start of it, this part here. I don't know he's talking over it. But it doesn't matter, because all we're going to do is uh, we're going to get the whole piece, and then we're going to try to get little bits out of it, man, to try use the synth on that. It's got a couple of uh, different um, chords on it, alright? Cool. Just going to sample that in. Just that first part. Let's do it. Alright, another one that I'm grabbing. George Benson. George, the swag man, the lady killer Benson. He's got a track called I Feel Like Making Love, which is like a, I remember D'Angelo doing this track. But this is the part we're grabbing, which is this part. It's about halfway through the track. This part here. Hang on, let me turn it down so I don't copyright. Hold up. Right, this part here, this is what I'm grabbing. I'm going to use George Benson again, alright, and the track is called Love Will Come Again, and it's on this album here, In Your Eyes, Far out. this guy with the, man, he knows how to pick the titles of his tracks, right, so, this is it, this is the start of it, right, now it's a four chord um, sample, right, well, I think it's not really a four chord, it's almost, it's a good loop, right, hear this? I won't play it all, just because of copyright, but you get the idea. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to sample this one in at 45, alright? Okay guys, I'm going to sample this in at 45. So the record's going to be spinning quicker, which means that it's going to be playing it quicker and at a higher pitch. Alright, just for you guys that don't know. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because I'll be going then to my MPC, and I'll be using the tune down function on this, right? Which is basically brings the pitch down and slows it down. And I'll be I'll be stretching this sound, right? It's a it's a it's a really, really common sort of technique that they would use with sampling machines. And the reason why I want to do that is because I want the processor inside this, I want it to try to interpret what this would sound like slow, played at normal speed. And it's going to sound different the way this would play compared to the way this one's going to try to play it. Alright? You'll get what I mean in just a second, alright? So, for that reason, 
I want to keep it a little bit grimy. I want the NPC's character on this part of the sample because it's going to be my base sample. So that's why I'm going to sample this one quicker. One other thing is I'm going to be running my finger along the top of it a little bit quicker and on the beat, right? Just slightly brushing my finger it just to cause a little bit of a waveform like this on the sound itself that's also going to add a little bit more character all right so i've got everything set up and i'm just going to quickly sample this right see it's playing quicker all right i'm just going to swap hands here excuse me all right let's do it That's it. Alright, that's it guys. Now the last thing I want to do guys is I'm going to grab a 45. It doesn't matter what 45 it is, it doesn't matter the record. What you kind of want is uh, every now and then you'll run into a record that sounds really dirty as soon as you put it on the needle. Just the way that it's uh, been, um, just the way it's been sort of carved out man. Now, <clears throat> the, the way the leaf has sort of cut the grooves into it. Now here's the thing, right? What I'm going to do is, I'm going to record some of that, I'm going to record some of the, the, the crackle, some of the sound that comes from the record. Now, I'm not just going to do that, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do uh, in order to maximize the, um, yeah, just the grime of it. I think I'm going to have it playing over the loop of the drums just to, just to give us some more grime is because, um, uh, because the Michael Jackson sample that that drum kit was like really really clean all right so i'm just going to show you guys you know a little something i like to do every now and then now i'm using a 45 because the 45 it's it's cut at a faster speed you know what i mean it's cut while it's spinning quicker which means if i slow it down this time i'm going to get a little bit more length at the start of the record uh theoretically that's what should happen all right so i'm going to place it on the start of the record now what i'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to place my hand like this, my thumb, sorry, on the needle. Now, the needle's going to want to start pulling in like this, right, because it's following the grooves. But because I'm going to have my thumb there as resist as a resistance, what, it's, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be springing it back like that. It's just going to be playing, moving in, and then springing back. You're going to hear it pop just a little bit, but that's how I'm going to keep this going on for a while. And then what I'm going to do is, I only need about 10, 15 seconds of it. And also what I've done here is I've turned the recording volume, right? The input signal, I've turned it down. The reason being is because I'm going to use the normalizing function on this machine. Or you can use computers, it doesn't matter what it is. But using the normalizing function of this or, or a compressor or something to bring the gain volume back up, right? Because I'm recording it uh, low, right? What that's going to do is it's going to bring out some hiss out of the out of the sample. It's going to bring out some of the noise out of it. If you have a really noisy machine, so it has like a buzzing running through it or a buzzing on 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 your turntable or something, I probably don't recommend you doing that because it's going to really bring out that buzz. Right? You can get rid of it later on, but it's just more work for yourself. So, if you still have a clean signal. It's nicer to use the normalization on this, man, because, again, I'm using the process of the computer and everything else that's in this or in your um, your own um, studio. I'm trying to bring out the characteristics of that processor, of that, of that sound card or whatever it is that you're using, all right? So volume down. The crackle is going to be set. I'm using a 45. It should be spinning a 45, but I'm going to set it... I'm going to put it down to uh, to the 33, right? So it's spinning slower. And now I'm just going to sample in that part, all right? All right, guys, here we go. So I'm just going to... So I'm trying to hold the phone at the same time, right? Put that there. Put my finger. See, I'm not allowing it to play. Ooh, that sounded good. Right, I'm just gonna do that. 
Right, that, that should be enough, all right? That should be enough. So I'm just gonna stop it here. All right, so I've chopped all my samples. What I wanna show you guys is how I'm gonna chop that crackle that I did, that, that, I, that I sampled in, all right? There's a particular way that I'm going to uh, to chop it, all right? So just come to the MPC. It doesn't matter if you have the MPC or, or, or you've got a computer, anything. If you could see the waveform or you could sort of work with slices, this might be a little bit more difficult to do on the older machines where you haven't got waveforms and you have to do everything by ear. But there's still a way for you to for you to slice your samples up and uh, to, to get rid of that popping sound, all right? All right, come to the MPC. Let me show you that. All right, you see this, guys? Here's my waveform. Now, I've gotten rid of the start of it because obviously I was setting my needle there and I've gotten rid of the end because that's where the, the song came in, right? Just sort of clipping it on both sides, right? That's what, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to clip both of them. Now, it's very quiet at the moment. So what I want to do is I want to normalize this, right? Now, uh, sorry, for you guys who have this machine, just hit edit. And we're going to go to normalization. And just as the picture here shows you, it brings a small waveform in it and it um, amplifies it a little bit more um, so that it ends up playing at the same level as all the other sort of samples, all right? It's only going to grab the highest part, right? It's only going to grab the highest part of the, um, uh, of the waveform, right? But this is it here. Right. Hear that? Now it's got a few pops in, and all that sort of stuff in there. Not to worry, I'm going to slice it, right? Just like most of you guys uh, have slicing options. And I'm just going to sort of slice it to a point where, you see, these are my slicing sort of uh, bits and pieces there. I'm going to try to make sure that all those pops... Those pops, see that's a pop there, that's a pop there. The ones where they jump out, I'm going to try to make sure and try to catch them at the end of the pad. All right, so I'm just going to be slicing it like this. Let's have a look here. I'm going to slice it about there. All right, so that's four, four point six slices. All right, I'm just going to do that. So I'll have six pads of crackle. So the drum pattern that I'm going to be doing is, is going to be a little bit more complicated than usual. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in two layers. I'm going to start my loops with that because it's got the nice hi-hat on it. And then the second, so it's two bars, start that. And then the, then the next two bars, I'll start with that. That's all I'm doing, right? Just to keep the count going. Now my quantizing is off, all right? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be doing this via feel. I'm not going to be using the swing setting on my, on my um, MPC. You can set the swing. For something like this, the sort of kick pattern I reckon we'll do, uh, you're gonna need about a 116. All right, that's that's if you if you don't want to do it via feel. All right, guys. All right, cool. So let's start that off. All right, all right, guys. Loop one. Let's do it. So I'm just gonna be doing this. Jumped in there. I'm just gonna get rid of one, which is gonna be that one there. All right. uh, I haven't actually put together uh, uh, anything at all, right? I'm going, but in my imagination, I've heard the samples and stuff. I just want to want to start communicating the feel. All right, we're gonna move on to the second one now. All right, all right. Loop two. Let's do it. It's just gonna be like this. Boom. And then I let it play, let it play, boom, bum, 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 bum. All right, let's just do this, right? Loop two. Ah, uh, that second one, it didn't, it just sounded, it, it didn't sound too good, right? So I'm just going to try that again. Boom, boom, oh shit.
to, all right? The kick's coming in heavy. There's a lot of ha lot happening in the kick, and then it backs off the loop, and then I'm going to allow the hi-hat to do its own thing, all right? So we're jamming. We're jamming. Let's do it. So my hi-hat's basically going to be doing like some sort of reggae thing where it's like boom, dun, 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 dun. You know what I mean? It's going to be coming off key in that. And then one, two, three. So it's going to be going one, 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 two, three, one, 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 You know, something like that. All right, let's do it. One, two, three, 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 one, that are different, right? Now the whole the whole drum kit's tuned down minus two, all right? Some sound a little bit longer than others. So what I'm gonna do is just add some more character where I'm just going to be playing it on like the, you know, halfway through the loop or something like that, all right? Just to give you an idea, something like this, right? One, two, three, one, two, three. You know what I mean? Just filling it in. I've got a lot of hi-hats, so I can do some interesting shit with it. All right, man? Let's keep going. Now, to separate, because it's basically two loops are going and I'm doing the same thing. To separate one from the next, I'm using a hi-hat to just differentiate between the start of that loop, the end of that loop. Right? So there's two parts. This is what I mean. You'll hear it come in, right? That, it's playing. Now. See what I mean? It just, you get that little extra one coming in, creates the loop, it widens the loop, it makes it a little bit longer. The other thing is, this kick is way too loud, right? One thing that's good to do is put the violin down. You could hear that kick. The second kick, that's the ghost kick, it's coming in too loud, man. You need it to back off. do the crackle. Now the crackle is this. We're still going to jam the crackle. We're not just going to play it like this and hope it just stays in the background. We're not going to do that. We're going to follow the loop, right? Now I'm going to do that because I want everything to be looping. I want everything to have rhythm, all right? So, add a little bit of the crackle, right? Let's do it. That's how we do it. Let's keep going. All right, guys. Now, what I'm going to do is this, right? Reverb. Sending it to the reverb. See? Nice and big. Shaping the reverb. I'm just going to do a quick shape. Shall I bring you over here, all right? Let's bring you over here. Quick reverb, now I'm just shaping the reverb. I like that. I'm gonna take it from the reverb to a compressor, all right? Reverb is basically just giving me a new space and now, because I got the crackle and I got everything running, I wanna compress it all to bring all the levels together so it all plays nice and uniform, you know what I mean? I want it to all play together. And I want it to be at the same wavelength, the same strength, the same color. All right? Compressor. I'll do a video on how to use a compressor in that, man. But let me let me just quickly do this. So it picks it up. Uh, let me do this. There we go. All 
Alright, now we're talking. You can really hear that crackle, everything's coming through it, alright? Look, come and listen. Now that's 30 drums. I got one more thing. One more thing, man. This is a special thing just for you guys, alright? I'm gonna show you how to do something special. So when the snare plays on every second snare, I like to change up the snares, you know what I mean? Give it a little bit more characteristic. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to layer the same snare, but pitched as normal. So it's going to be a little bit higher. So it's going to go boom, bang like that. And I'm going to play it with a delay. But the way I'm going to do my delay is I'm going to do a manual delay. Right? I'm going to hit the pads manually. Uh, delayed. I don't want you to mess around with um with the uh, programs and doing all this sort of shit, right? All I want you to do is this. Instead of hitting the pad on time like this, like that, you're gonna finger delay, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pretend that this finger here is the one that's on time, but you're actually gonna hit the pad with that. So you hit on the outside of the on, on your machine or whatever it is, you hit it like this. Followed by that, just like doing this, right? Like when someone does a scale on the piano or something like that. I don't play piano, so I wouldn't know. like that. So two finger delay, three finger delay, four finger delay. All right, we're going to delay it ever so slightly so it sounds a little bit more like a clap. Now, that's really really good trick to be able to do claps. If you want to do claps. You can mix a snare drum with a rim shot. Do those, mix those up, use your fingers, give it a bit of a delay. All right, man? So I'm going to be using a three finger delay. So the snare will hit and then that will come after it. All right? I'm just going to be doing that loop. Okay, let's do it. All right, guys. So remember, three finger delay on, uh, on my second snare, every second snare. Let's do it. That's it. Cool. Let's keep going. All right, guys. <clears throat> it's time to put. It's time to put some uh, some samples on our on our uh, little sequence on our drums. Right. We got our drums. Sound nice and fat. They got good rhythm. You know what I mean? Good space. Good air. Good grime. All that. All the good shit. Right. Now here's the thing. I've minus this sample. Uh, which sample was this? Let's have a look here. Sample four, which would have been this one, which was the one we we're gonna use as a bass sample, right? Remember we sampled it in at 45, really fast. All right. Now I brought it way down to minus 13. Now here's the thing, hear that snare, it's very annoying, it's going to be very difficult to get rid of it, right, but we have this, right, we have, you know what I mean? We've got those there, but there's a massive gap, man. So what we're gonna have to do is time stretch. Now time stretching does exactly that. It stretches the time, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, this is gonna be my guinea pig, the first one, because that's the first key that I hit. And I'm going to copy this one. Right, I'm just gonna copy it, there we go. Go back to my pads here, and I'm gonna make sure that I'm playing my guinea pig. All right, that's my guinea pig. Now I'm going back here. Now I'm editing my first pad. Right? I'm going to 
Uh, on this machine, right, on this particular machine, guys, there's an edit function, right? So you guys need to go to edit your sample. I'm not sure where you're going to find it in different areas of various machines. Uh, this machine here, the S950, has a time stretch as well. This one here asks me for the original tempo, which is at the moment 90, 90 beats per minute. That's the speed of our beat. And I need to bring it down, right? So that I'm stretching it out to, I don't know, I'm going to try to stretch it in intervals of like 10 beats per minute. You know, something like that. Let me just do it. Uh, and I'm going to overwrite it. Let's see if it makes it, right? Remember, we're playing from this one to this one. See how it's stretched out? I want to see, isn't it, is it making it from this one to the point where I hit this one? Let's hear it. It just falls shy. So 10 beats per minute is not enough. I'm probably going to need to bring it down 15 beats per minute. All right. Now I'm going to do that. Now don't be tempted just to hit this one and then go into your, um, into your settings. Oh shit into your settings here and edit this one because this one's no longer playing at the original split speed right so you need to copy your original guinea pig again and then bring it down 15 beats per minute all right i'm just gonna do that so i went through and time stretched them all all right it ended up being i needed to bring it down 20 beats per minute all right just experiment with your uh with your drum machine and with you know yeah your equipment 20 beats. You can hear that ringing. Now, to now disguise that sample, we're going to use a little bit of low passing. Some of those drums are coming through, they're kind of clanging through, so we're going to use a little bit, we're going to get rid of some of the bottom end and let it sit nicely disguised but nonetheless time stretch dirty all the rest of it all right so that's all i fixed up you know what i mean put a little bass on it just a little bass to thicken out cool so you've gone just starting to add some sprinkles now, right? Remember this sample? Just to add some sprinkles on it, right? So we're taking that. Made it, put a little bit of a equalizer on it, man. Just to get rid of the high bits, the low parts. Just leave it with just a little bit of those sprinkles. All right? And it's... Tune down as well. I always tune things down, man. So that's tuned down to minus six, all right? So check this out. This is it here. You know what I mean? Bass is a little bit rough, things are rough, EQing can create some more space. But that's what we're doing, we're just adding sprinkles. Things that we can switch on and off, you know what I mean? You see how it's switched off now? It allows the MC to rap on you, you know what I mean? Alright, let's keep going, let's keep going. Oh man, and the last thing I want to do guys, uh, look I added a little something here. A little bit of like a neck or whatever, but look, the last thing I want to do is this thing where I actually use these bits and pieces. And these I'm going to take these pads, and because I've got so much like clunky stuff running through them, I'm going to smooth them off right using my envelope. So, the envelope, uh, look, I've, I've, I've talked about this in other videos, man. I don't want to waste up too much time, but basically, the envelope is just the way it hits, comes in soft. That's how I want it. Sustain it and just 
Yeah, just release it as normal. So now it's not. Now they're nice and soft. You see? All right, all right, man. Time for a track presentation. Let's just have a look at the track with me. Guys, track presentation time. Let's listen to our disgusting, dirty drums. Bring in the bass and the bass set. Let's play it again. I'm in a chilled mood, man. That's why I made a chilled beat. All right, but once again, thanks guys. Thanks for everyone for tuning in, man. I really appreciate it. You know what I mean? Until next time, man. You guys take care of yourselves. I hope you learned something. Remember that manual delay. Do all of that sort of stuff, man. Just have fun with your beats, man. Uh, I'll be back next week for weekend beat time, man. So uh, peace, guys. Take care of yourselves. Be good to your families, man. And uh, I'll catch you next week, all right? Peace.